Hello, I'm Joelle Figali from Central Superlic in France. I'm going to present to you today our work on simplifying complex multi-energy modelica models using an energy-based reduction method. During this presentation, I'm going to present to you first the context and objectives of our work. And then we're going to go into details in the energy-based reduction method. And we're going to see how this method can be used for models in Modelica. After that, we're going to see how this method can be applied to multi-energy systems. We're going to show you some of our results. And finally, to conclude, we're going to highlight our contribution and our future work. Multi-energy systems like the electrical grid, the district heating network, and the buildings are interconnected and they interact with each other and exchange different types of energy. These multi-energy systems are facing new challenges like the integration of new sources of energy, like the renewable energy that is an intermittent source. Also, there's the need to reduce the total energy bill of the system. And for example, for the electrical grid, sometimes we need flexibility at the peak time of the energy consumption. To face all of these challenges, we need new control strategies. To control our system, we need to model it. And Modelica language is a suitable language to model such multi-energy, multi-physics systems. Dimoda can be used to simulate these models. But sometimes the multi-energy models are too complex and they can result in large simulation time that is too large for our optimization purposes. So the objective of our work is to reduce the complexity of multi-energy models so that we can reduce the simulation time. We are looking for a solution that gives us a reduced model with good computational time and a good accuracy. And this solution should be suitable for Modelica models. We propose a solution that is the energy-based ranking method that was used in the works of Soja to uh, reduce uh, elementary Modelica models. So what is the energy-based reduction method? This method helps us to find components that contribute less to the energy flow of the system and then remove these components or replace them. So first we have to define what is the energy flow of the component and then we have to calculate an energy criteria. Here we're going to calculate the activity. Then we're going to rank the component with respect to their activity and finally we will remove or replace the low activity components. So the activity as it was defined by Luca for bond graph is the absolute value of the energy flowing to a component during given time. And the total energy flow of a component is the sum of the energy flows at its ports. And the activity will be calculated during the simulation. After ranking the components with respect to their activity, low activity components will be removed or replaced. A challenge that we can face is when the model is too large or too complex, so we have too many components and a lot of interactions, and removing or replacing com components cannot be manipulated manually. So the solution that we propose is to replace the components, the low activity components, with, for example, an empty template. And to do that, we have to use the syntax replaceable uh, at the definition of the component so that we can redeclare the component later on with another definition. Now we're going to see how this method can be applied to multi-energy systems. If you consider a system where we have buildings connected to an electrical grid and to a district heating network, we can notice that the complexity of the model comes from the number of buildings. So we choose buildings as components to be ranked. So after removing the buildings, we will have a less complex model. And if we look at the component building, we can see that if it is connected to the electrical grid and to the district heating network, 
it will be exchanging different types of energy flows. It will be exchanging the active and reactive electrical power with the electrical grid and the heating power with the, uh, with the district heating network. So these energy flows cannot be summed. And to calculate activity, we will have to calculate activity for each. And here in our example, we will have three types of activities. And finally, when our buildings are connected to the other models, and when we remove a building, this will impact the values of the output of outputs of interest in the electrical grid model and the heating network model. Our study case is a multi-energy district located in the southern suburbs of Paris in France. The data are provided by the Electricity of France, our industrial partner. The multi-energy district is too large and we chose 20 buildings uh, to test our method. These 20 buildings have PV panels and are connected to the electrical grid and 12 of them are connected to the district heating network. The heat pump and the storage tank will be feeding the district heating network. To model our district in Dimola, we will be using three EDF libraries. BuildSys Pro library to model buildings and PowerSys Pro library to model electrical grids are two open access libraries. Mixis Pro library to model district heating network is an internal uh, EDF library. The buildings calculate their heating and electrical demand and they give them to the district heating network and the electrical grid. And at these levels, we can see the outputs of interest. Here we can see the model in Dimola. Buildings model is composed of 20 buildings and each of the building has one envelope and one energy system. The weather and occupation scenarios are the input of this model. And we can see here the outputs to the electrical grid model and to this district heating network model. In the electrical grid model, we have power flow calculation. The inputs that are the electrical active and reactive power demands are given to each building at this level. We are interested in the voltages at the nodes and the currents at the lines. In the district heating network model, we have 12 buildings that are divided into three sub-networks. Each building takes as an input the heating demand. We are interested in the temperature and the mass flow at the substation level of each building. To see the results, we have to calculate the activities. And as we said earlier, each building has three types of activities. We calculated these activities during the simulation over a one year interval. But we ended up with the same ranking for the three activities. For that, we are showing you only one ranking for the activity. If we look at the bottom of the table, we'll find the low activity buildings. And if we want to remove the last four buildings, we can see that by removing them, we will be only removing 1% of the total activity uh, of uh, the buildings. We're gonna see the effect of the number of buildings simulated on the simulation time. When we simulate less buildings, the simulation time will be reduced. For example, if we're simulating 16 buildings, as if we removed four buildings, we will have 1% of the activity error, but we will be gaining in the simulation time by a factor of two. Buildings are connected to the electrical grid and the district heating network. So when we reduce buildings, we will impact the values of uh, the outputs of the electrical grid and the district heating network. So we have to verify the precision of the reduced model and that by verifying the values of the outputs of interest of each of the electrical grids and the district heating network. 
we introduced criteria like the norm infinity of the error between the signal of the complete model and the signal of the reduced model and also the mean average error. These criteria will be normalized to see the plots. In the electrical grid and in the case of removing four buildings, we can see that the current at the lines that are uh, close to these buildings is more affected than the lines that are far from these removed buildings. And the same thing applies to the voltage. In the district heating network, we will notice that the buildings that are on the same subnetwork of the removed buildings will be impacted and the buildings that are on a different subnetwork of the removed buildings won't be impacted. And finally, to conclude, in our paper, we showed a proof of concept of the energy-based reduction method that is generalized to multi-energy systems. We propose a solution to reduce models in Dimola using replaceable and redeclare properties. And by using this method, we were able to reduce the simulation time while verifying the reduced model. For ongoing and future work, we will be calculating the activity correlated uh, with the outputs of interest. And this activity might give us uh, the information about uh, how the outputs of interest will be impacted by the removal of the buildings. And second, we're going to be testing our uh, methods on a larger scale model. And finally, we want to compare our method uh, with other reduction methods like the aggregation of components. And thank you for your attention.